This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, time for some bay fluking. The warmer uh, weather has brought in warmer water and bait and fluke, and uh, I don't know if you can see them, but on the horizon there, we've got a lot of birds working on this incoming current. So there's bait being pushed in. Uh, hopefully have some good action. And I've got a new rod to try. It's a, uh, a light bay version of the Skinner fluke rod. So we're gonna see how that goes. All right. All right, a couple of important things to learn on this uh, video. Hey, take notice of two things. First is the water quality. Look how it's kind of brownish. The other thing is, hopefully you can see on the fish finder there, I've got 75 degree water, so both of these things are going to be important. I'm about, I don't know, a mile and a half away from the nearest inlet, this incoming current. Um, but that water's got that brownish bay look as opposed to nice, clean ocean water. I'm only about uh, two and a half hours away from high tide. Normally, I would expect the incoming cleaner water to have pushed into this area by now. But um, no, it's not the case. And I got to tell you, the fishing is awful. Um, these first 90 minutes or so, uh, I had one short fluke on. That was it. What I did catch... Uh, it was a lot of sea robins, a lot of really small sea robins. And, um, yeah, it, it's just, uh, you know, I'm, at this point I'm thinking, oh, boy, this, is, this trip's just an absolute loser. But, you know, this is a good lesson in water quality and how it affects the fishing. Um, and, yeah, it's going to turn around in a hurry. Yeah, these are the little sea robins. I pulled up, you know, probably 15 of them. It's been terrible. All right, now notice the water difference. This is about, I don't know, about 90 minutes later. Um, you see it's uh, more of a green, clean look to it. And uh, if you can see it on the fish finder, you'll see it's 71 degrees. It dropped four degrees, uh, given that uh, cleaner, cooler ocean water coming in. And oh my goodness, it's like somebody has flipped a light switch with the fishing. All right, you see I've got a three inch gulp shrimp on the top and uh, below that on the bucktail, I've got the four inch gulp grub. Um, you know, I often start with the shrimp in these bay situations because uh, a lot of times you've got shrimp and crabs and stuff in the bay and that's what the fluke feed on. But I'm gonna make a decision here to uh, switch over from the shrimp and just have two of the um, grubs on because I, you know, I'm seeing bait fish in the water now, and uh, you know I think the fluke are going to be on those rather than on crabs and shrimp. You see, I'm hitting spot lock there to uh, not lose any ground on the drift uh, you know, while I'm dealing with this fish. And I can do this right now because I don't have any boats around me at all. So uh, I'm not going to be going against the grain by holding the boat in position for a bit. If, if there were other boats around, I definitely wouldn't do that. So the Dark Matter Skinner Jig and Bounce Rod has become just tremendously popular. And... Um, but, you know, that weight range on that rod is like one to six ounces, you know, fishing deeper water, heavier jigs, ocean. But I do a lot of bay fishing. So this is the bay version of that rod. Uh, you know, think about payloads, half to two ounces, this kind of fishing. And uh, yeah, they've just got into J&H tackle. And uh, yep, so I'm getting to use the ones that just came in. And the spinning version of the original Jig and Bounce uh, has come in as well. A lot of people have asked me about that. And there'll be links to both in the video description. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, fishing in the kayak around uh, in areas with a fair number of boats can be interesting. Uh, I keep the boat pointed towards the main channel so I can see what's going on there and also so I'll have the bow um, into any waves that um, are coming at me. But, you know, there's obviously other boats going around. And you know what? Uh, you know, some of them are really big. And, you know, you just have to kind of keep your eyes open and, and be a little bit careful with things. All right, I'm keeping fish this trip. Um, I actually threw the first keeper back because I had fished so long with only one keeper, I thought maybe that was all I was going to get. I didn't want to dirty the cooler for one fish, and I figured, hey, if the fishing is going to pick up, I'll, I'll get fish. Um, so I've got a soft cooler, and as uh, my regular viewers know, I like to bleed those fish out, which is a little trickier in the kayak. I realize you could put them on a stringer ham over the side. Uh, just from fishing in Florida, I, I you know, don't do that uh, because of sharks down there. I'm just in the habit. I, I don't do that. So I've got my soft cooler, and um, you know, I'll just, I've got ice in there, and it, it works really well. It's a, a kayak bag, and uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a canyon bag, and but a good size for the kayak. And I'll just uh, slit the fish like I would on the boat and just do that into the bag and yeah I got a little bit of cleanup <laughs> when I get home but you know this works out fine uh, the meat still ended up being nice and white and clean and uh, yeah it works out so yeah I got a large boat there in front of me so I'm just gonna get out of the path there I pulled up in front and um, yeah kayaks not going fast so I'll get this thing moving and uh, you know watch what I'm doing and just get up and around him to start the next drift um, but there we go he zipped up in there and uh, It'll stay nice and cold, even though it's a pretty warm day. Okay, this is real early in the next drift. All right, yeah, I'm hitting them really well uh, up in that spot, so I'm going to take advantage of the electric kayak here and just get it moving back up drift while I deal with this fish. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, it's like any other kind of drift fishing. You know, if you identify where those fish are, you, you pound the spot, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, making a real fine adjustment there, uh, just wanting to drift along the edge of the bar. All right, fourth keeper, uh, third one in the cooler. So here's something kind of cool I think is like related to the electric kayak is, uh, you know, obviously you have to recharge your batteries when you get back. This is a, a lithium battery. There's the charger I'm recharging, but I'm not recharging from the wall. I'm doing it off this power station. It's called a Cool Fly Power Station S1000. Um, and you know, really the main application for one of these things is during a storm or something, your lights go out, you want to be able to run, you know, a light toaster fan. I ran around the house, plugged a bunch of things into that to, to see how that worked. So yeah, it's an emergency power setup, but I thought about like the remote camping situation where you know you need to get this guy charged up. Um, and if you don't have power nearby, what do you do? Well, this guy can charge this. Um, in addition, what's really neat is this comes with a solar panel. So you can charge, you know, you could be you know away from power, and then during the day, you can charge this with a solar panel and then you've got that uh, power to use for lights or for whatever it is you want to use or maybe to charge the battery for your electric kayak. Okay, and here's the power station with its solar panel. And uh, yeah, the charge is going up, so it does appear to work. So it's pretty neat stuff. All right, that bite slowed as the current died over there and now it's turned around to outgoing water. 
and uh, I'm on the other side of the bar, still in good looking water, and uh, got the wind coming up now too. All right, I still need one more fish for my cooler limit. It's uh, four fish at 18 and a half inches. I'm uh, Eastern Long Island, so those, those are New York regulations. And I'm going to get into a great little bite here as the outgoing water gets moving. And keep in mind, the first 90 minutes in this area, it was as bad as it gets. I mean, there were no fluke. There were lots of sea robins. And now look at the fishing. It's going to be one after another. What you're seeing here, the sequence of what, whatever, maybe four or five fish, whatever it is. You know, this is all in the same drift, and these are not long drifts whatsoever. It's basically you put down, you hook up, and it's just, um, you know, really something to see. Sometimes fishing looks bad. you got to wait for a change in conditions, and it can turn on. That one feels good. Oh, what have we got here? We got a double, but the back one looks legal. We'll never know. All right, second drift in, in this spot. Yeah, I guess I should netted that double that was probably a keeper on the end but I thought it would be a disaster with two fish in the net. Oh, really loving the new rod, and, and it'll be great for Long Island Sound fluking as well. And uh, all right, this is uh, get this one in, and uh, I'll have my limit in the cooler. Oh, the bite was so good, I decided I'd just make another drift just for fun, but uh, yeah, this is what it looks like going up into it. The wind is picking up, so yeah, I'm going to have to pack it in here. So. All right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, uh, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to that notification bell. Yeah, and uh, check out the uh, the new rod. I, I've got a link to that. Check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner.